Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Last week, we had a guest on the program for the weekend, but we don't this week. We're back to our regular second scoop, which is cool because I got a lot of stuff that I wanted to get to. Hey, this is kind of an interesting thing here. The percentage of women who wash their hands after leaving the restroom is 80%. The percentage of men who wash their hands after using the restroom, 55%. Ew. Yeah. Ew. Isn't that good? <clears throat> I was telling you uh, about, I don't know, a week ago, we had a conversation about this. And I was at a giant, giant store that rhymes with Walmart. Oh, did I say it? <laughs> and there was somebody that was in utilizing the, the toilet. And I was washing my hands. I had just used a urinal. And he got out and he walked right behind me. And I'm seeing him in the mirror walk past me. And he goes out. And I was thinking the whole time, is he supposed to wash his hands? So then I walk out thinking, well, maybe he's done with work and he's going home. It doesn't make it right. But no, he walked over to a checkout stand and was checking people's groceries out. And I was like, oh. Yeah, that's... Uh... Wash your produce, people. I'm just saying. You never know where that stuff's been. Coming up, we got some special things to talk about. That is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today is Saturday, April 23rd. It is English Language Day, Impossible Astronaut Day, National Dance Day, National Lost Dog Awareness Day, Movie Theater Day, Talk Like Shakespeare Day. Does that think that's how Shakespeare talks? I don't believe so. Probably no. not. World Book and Copyright Day and World Book Night is tonight. And Sunday is Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. It's kind of a downer. <laughs> National Pet Parents Day. Pinhole Photography Day. Oh, Mo- I love pinhole photography. We'll have to tell me what that is in a second. It's also Mother Father Deaf Day, New Kids on the Block Day, and World Meningitis Day on on Sunday. What is pinhole photography? Uh, we had to do it when I was in photography in high school. You take a, a box that is the inside is all black, yeah. and you put a... While you're in the dark room, you put a piece of uh, photo, photo paper. paper at the back of it, and then um, there's a little pinhole slide at the front and then when you get outside you point it to what you want to take your picture of you poke a little pinhole in it and you let it sit for a certain amount of time and then you cover up the pinhole and then you take the photo into the dark room and you develop it and it's really really cool how are kids going to do that today with all this digital stuff it's just cool it's really it's a neat experiment all right get out there and celebrate i'm going to celebrate by listening to some new kids on the block This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888-547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The longest movie in the history of the world is going to be released in 2020. And right now, you can watch the trailer. Even the trailer is long. You want me to talk, what should we talk about first? The trailer, like the teaser trailer or the movie? The trailer. Okay. The trailer is seven hours and 20 minutes long. That's insane. Yeah. It's dumb, too. The world's longest fil- film is called Ambiance. It is slated to have a runtime of 720 hours, which is exactly 30 days. It'll Who take you. on earth? It's not even interesting. It'll be released on December 31st, 2020. Now, to get us hyped up for this awesome movie, there's a 7 hour and 20 minute trailer. So that's 10% of it. 7 hours and 20. You watch. That'll win all the awards. It better not. Just because it's so unique Here's what it is. so artsy. Somebody left a black and white camera rolling on a beach, basically. So stupid. And then you see people walking around in the background. And then they come over towards the camera. And then they go back in the background. I I didn't watch the full 7 hours because... 
I got about five <laughs> minutes of it, and I, I skipped through it thinking, will there Does be something some happen? Is there a jump scare? <laughs> will there be some dialogue or a plot eventually? Anything? Uh, Bueller? 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 Yeah. Nothing. No, there was nothing. It was just the dumbest thing ever. So the seven-hour teaser is longer than most movies, but the world's longest film, and if maybe this is something you're looking forward to, and I'm sorry for bad-mouthing it, because if this is what you're excited about, and you're looking to watch a seven-hour and 20-minute movie, <laughs> which is 30 days long, if you want to watch that for 30 days. Somebody will watch it, just like, they say, oh, have you seen that new film that was 30 hours was long? It was so oh. fantastic. I was watching it. Sadly, I couldn't get away from my mother's funeral. <laughs> <during> the- <laughs> Talk about binge watching. <laughs> 30 days it'll take to watch this thing. Anyway, if you want to watch the seven hour teaser trailer, I've got a link at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. And you know it's true because you heard that ridiculous thing on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. When 27-year-old Winnipeg man ran out of gas, he decided to flag down a police officer for some help. It's a good idea, right? Oh, yeah. It's a good idea. Of course, unless you're a moron like this guy. Uh, Police obliged. They quickly discovered the motorist had a suspended license. That's one thing that's bad. Upon further investigation, they found an undisclosed amount of crack cocaine and crystal meth and illegal weapons in his vehicle. To make matters worse, the officers discovered that the other man that was with him had an arrest warrant, and they busted him, too. Oh, lovely. So if you have crack cocaine, illegal weapons, crystal meth, and a guy with an arrest warrant, maybe you don't flag down a police officer to help push when you run out of gas. (laughs) That would be the kind of thing when they pull over and say, you guys need help? Say, no, no, we're just just waiting for a friend. Friends coming. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not a criminal mastermind. But neither are these guys. <laughs> All right. That's what happens, kids, when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. And we got your moment of duh. And this one happens uh, at a KFC, I believe. It says, sometimes it pays to be chicken. Harold Harper of Salt Lake City, Utah, robbed a KFC restaurant, but he couldn't drive away because he locked his keys inside of his car. No problem. He just ran off and eluded authorities when they were uh, pulling in to, to arrest him. He just r- ran away. But a short while later, the idiot came back. Police were at the restaurant taking reports, and somebody noticed that, hey, uh, the guy that robbed us is right over there. He had a coat hanger, and he was standing by his car trying to get in. Oh, my god! Now he's locked up in a different way, in jail, eating the prison's idea of chicken, whatever that is. So he robbed a KFC, kind of, sort of got away. Because his car was there, the keys were locked in. I don't know that they realized that was his car until, of course, he came back with the coat hanger and, you know, tried to tried to get himself wow. apparently arrested because it worked. That's your moment of duh. We have your first scoop of the day on the way. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your scoop of the day. Prince William is being accused of slacking off on his royal duties. For example, like the royal trash hasn't been taken out and the royal <laughs> dishes haven't been done. What are his royal duties? Exactly. I, I don't no know. Clue. Photo ops and autographs? Apparently. I don't know. Well, he's slacking off. Uh, McDonald's is smothering some reports of a new Missouri restaurant that was testing an all-you-can-eat french fries campaign. They say the endless spuds would be available for a limited time only, and it was just for that site's scheduled july grand opening heidi is trying to figure out where in missouri we need to be in july <laughs> all you can eat mcdonald's fries i love i know you do mcdonald's fries they are good they are very good oh a norwegian funeral home accidentally sent a letter to an old woman telling her of a special discount offer on her tombstone the woman is shocked to read the letter offering sympathy about her recent death and she was the one that read it and it was 
addressed to her wow. about her dying. That's weird. I think that was some sort of glitch in a computer system or somebody just being mean, one or the other. Or someone at the funeral home had plans for her and yeah, might as well pre-plan. Myrtle's reading that going, um, <laughs> am, am I dead? I don't think I'm dead. <laughs> New research shows dinosaurs had passed their best years long before the asteroid wiped them out. Oh. So by the time they were killed, these guys were all in the downhill slide. You know, they... Uh, each one of them had already gone through like a midlife crisis. They were driving, you know, fancy sports cars. And, <laughs> I don't know. What is that? Scientists say that their best years I, had passed. Them. I have no idea how they would even know I have that. no clue either. I just think it's ridiculous. I think some scientists need to get different jobs because they guess on things and then they call it, well, scientifically it's proven. No, yeah. it's not. You guessed. It's not scientifically <laughs> proven. The smallest room in the house is now turning into a reading room for many people in the upper income brackets, Heidi. According to survey, people whose household incomes are more than $50,000 a year are more likely to read on the toilet than lower income earners. 58% compared to 39%. So the good news is, that is a trait that I really do enjoy. So one of these days, I might start making some money, Heidi. (laughs) Here's what I think it is. I think, honestly, it has nothing to do with the income. And it just has to do with the... I shouldn't say that it has nothing to do with the reading, because let me explain what I'm trying to say. I think that readers are leaders. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're reading is what's helping them make more money. I don't think that it's the fact that they make more money is why they're reading. I think but it's the other way usually around. usually people who are making more money are very busy. <clears throat> and so yeah. their only downtime sure. when they would even have time to read would be while they are on the toilet, which that probably explains I understand. that um, study. That, I'm just saying. I agree with the study. Yeah. A high school senior in Massachusetts is holding up a cardboard sign on the sidewalk asking for money to go to college. I saw that. Get a job. She wants to become a doctor. Good for you. So she's Go get a job. Trying to work her way there with uh, panhandling to Good the- Lord. You know how many students all across this country don't have the money to go to school? That's why you have student loans. I know. Go get a job and work your way through school. I, I was so irritated when I saw I that. Kind of sounds I like I was it. like, I hope nobody has given her a dime. You that is ridiculous. Personally, she you? has a roof over her head. <laughs> no. She has a family. She's got everything that she needs. She's got good grades. She's got scholarships. And she's down? begging for money on the street. Hey. And hey. she's perfectly able-bodied to go and get a job. I'll come back when you're done. You just tell me when you're <laughs> It's just irritating. Kids these days <sighs> irritate the heck out of me. Well, if kids irritate you, maybe this 70-year-old man will as well. For four weeks now, a 70-year-old man has been calling the police in China during the night, claiming that he'd fallen and couldn't get up. Every time they showed up, he was fine, <laughs> and he said, I'm sorry, I'm just really lonely. So instead of pressing charges for abusing their emergency service system, police officers said, okay, you need to quit calling, but I promise we'll come around more often just to chat. That way you won't get in trouble when we stop by. Right now, every time we stop, you're getting a fine. So there you go. Coming up, we got a second scoop. I know, that is very sad. We've got a second scoop. Maybe that's something this young lady could do with her time, volunteer to go and see people who really need someone. See? There he didn't go. mind paying a fine to have people come see him. Maybe he would pay her to come and spend some time with him. Brilliant idea. See, they, we should hook those two up. Yeah, you go for that. <laughs> I got to get stuff ready for our second <laughs> scoop. That is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. Start earning 6%. Go to commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com right now. What are you waiting for? Go to commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. Again, that's commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. John and Heidi. Now your second scoop of the day. A mom was grounded after her child doodled in her passport, but when she was grounded, it was like she couldn't board an airplane. That's a bad kind of grounded. Woman in China was stopped from boarding an airplane after security discovered her young child had scribbled in her passport. Two of the pages were covered with doodles. Uh, that is not good, but it wasn't her fault. So apparently she needed to watch her child closer. I think that's terrible that she couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, your passport's ruined. You're, you're stuck here. Did you know that can happen? I had no clue. No. Scientists say that next month the Northeast will be overrun by the 17-year cycle of cicadas. 
Mm. There will be up to 1.5 million cicadas per acre. One, one person guess. That's a lot of cicadas. Gross. And they make this uh, interesting Yeah, and noise. they're disgusting. Now let's head to England. Heidi's got a story for England as well. But an airplane approaching Heathrow hit a drone. Oh. Luckily, it landed safely. British Airway flight was hit as it approached the London airport with 132 passengers, five crew. After landing, the pilot reported an object that he thought was a drone had struck the front of the Airbus A320. Aviation police based at Heathrow have launched an investigation. They have no clue who was doing what or what it was, but they think it was just you know somebody playing with a drone by the airport. Bad, bad, bad idea. Now, you have a friend in England that called you. What did, they, what did she call for? Well, she said, can you do me a favor and look up which celebrities in England were involved in a threesome? There were some celebrities. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. Yeah. So did you Google this? I, oh, I did. Oh, man. Um, I can only imagine what your computer is thinking right now. But, but she said that England courts have banned and blocked any press from discussing the names of the people involved in this. Wow. And... Um, she asked me, she said, I know that it's been released in the United States. Can you please look it up for me? So I did. It didn't take me very long to find it at all. It was all over the place. Turns out that it was Elton John mm. and his husband. I can't even remember his name, but they're both celebrities. And then somebody who works for them. Yeah. And There's some kind of scandal? Well, yeah. I don't know what the whole... I, I apparently, don't care what the scandal is. I think it's bad that the country's blocking the media from Apparently all the hubbub is because Elton John's... Husband wanted to have unprotected intercourse with this person who works for them. Mm. Um, and everybody's all upset because of all of Elton John's work with the AIDS virus and everything that that's a you know very bad idea <laughs> yeah, yeah and i don't know it was it was interesting what i found most interesting about it is i didn't know england did not have freedom of press yeah well apparently- i really had no idea i th- i thought the only countries that did stuff like that were like china and north korea i did not know england well, add them was to one the of the list. countries that that the press was not allowed to report the truth i think well, that's really sad back to our free press here a california pastor hit a 47 foot jump shot at a Sac- uh, sacramento king's basketball game and he won a 2016 ford focus ah. 47 feet away that's a long ways away pastor joseph sika of the center for praise is raffling his prize off to help raise money for his ministry outreach oh, program isn't that nice and it's for the needy that is really cool a study reveals parents to be agonize up to 45 hours over names of their unborn child it's really tough to pick a name especially for us we have the last name small there's a lot of names you don't want to put in front of small i'm just saying a Texas woman was arrested after police say she pretended to be a bull. Now, before we move forward in this, this could have very easily been saved for next week and become one of our This Is Your Brain on Drug stories. But I also think this sounds like something you would do after drinking just enough. <laughs> Back to the story. A woman <laughs> arrested after police say she pretended to be a bull and charged at passing cars. By the time police arrived... <laughs> I er- would not You would, that. too. Erica Lenz had been dragged inside by her sister and teenage son. Her son uh, told police... Sorry, mom has consumed large quantities of tequila. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to go, mom. Average iPhone is unlocked 80 times a day. Heidi, 80 times a day. People are popping their phone open to see what's going on in there as far as uh, do I get an I email, do I get a call. It says at that rate, in a given 12-hour day of usage, iPhone users check their phones between six or seven times an hour or about once every 10 minutes. A previous study of Android users found that Move over, iPhone users. You only check yours 80 times a day. We check ours 110 times a day. I'm one of those. I was just complaining. My screen was too dark. I hit a button and did something I wrong. love the Android technology. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, there's a, a video. Remember the video of Pizza Rat? Do you remember this? Yeah. Well, I didn't watch it, but I remember I hearing it. was a big rat it. in New York. I don't waste my time well, with that. Bagel Rat is here now. New York oh, City is a big place filled with various rodents of all different sizes and apparently interests in food. And now the next viral snacking rodent sensation is Bagel Rat. Why would anybody care? Why why even upload that? Well, somebody got a rat on video dragging a bagel (laughs) down the sidewalk. Last year, Pizza Rat became famous when he was seen dragging a slice of pizza down some stairs. So I've got a link. Just leave them alone and let them eat. All of you who want to see Bagel Rat, I've got a a link if you want to check it out. (laughs) I'm sure you're on the edge of your seats right now. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. 
This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll free at 1 844 204 1055. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Some toothpaste contains antifreeze. As a matter of fact, many, many, many toothpastes contain antifreeze. Really? Yeah, don't swallow. Does it say that right on the box? It it says antifreeze? Well, no, it's got a ethylene glycol, maybe, is what it says. I don't know. It's it's got the technical term. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Bird poop is the chief export of Nauru. It's an island nation in the Western Pacific. So what do you guys do? Uh, We just scoop up bird poop. That's their chief export. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are more plastic flamingos in America than there are real flamingos. Yeah, that makes sense. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Chili is the official state dish of Texas. Mm. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? While drug-sniffing dogs are trained to bark like crazy and go aggressive at the first whiff of uh, the right powder, bomb-sniffing dogs are trained to go passive because... If they would go crazy, sometimes the motion sensors that would be attached to the bombs would go kaboom. Huh. So if you have a drug-sniffing dog that wants to become a bomb-sniffing dog, he has to be completely retrained. I love those dogs. They're I do, too. All of them. They're so fascinating. And our final fun fact, and we're going to talk more about this in a bit, there are 24 flowers on each Oreo cookie. I did not know this, but there are. Little mm. flowers, 24 on each Oreo cookie. And in a bit, we're going to talk about the Oreo cookie personality test it's on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by RadioReallyWorks.com. I know you're listening to a podcast, but did you know the John and Heidi Show is also a radio show? And for those of you who have businesses, you should consider using radio to advertise your business. We can even help you create some catchy little jingles or amazing radio ads that will help pull people in. Get all the details or just learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Do you like Oreo cookies? I do. Uh, Psychologists have discovered the manner in which people eat their Oreo cookies provides great insight into their personalities. Choose which method describes your favorite way to eat Oreo cookies. The whole thing all at once, one bite at a time, slow and methodical nibbles examining the results of each bite afterwards, in little fervorous nibbles, dunked in some liquid, milk or coffee, twisted apart the inside, then the cookie, twisted apart, the inside and toss the cookie or just the cookie and don't eat the inside which one of those is you twist it apart the inside then the cookie all right i'll get to that one in a second because i they're in order here if you eat the whole thing it means you consume life without abandon you're fun to be with exciting carefree with some hint of recklessness how do i eat mine do i eat mine the whole bite? i, I think, think i do that the whole bite i think that's me uh, i think one, you yours in one bite <laughs> that's what i'm saying the whole thing uh, one bite at a time, you're lucky enough to be one of the 5.4 billion other people who eat their Oreos the very same way. That is the way normal people eat them. <laughs> Three, slow and methodical. That means you follow the rules. You're very tidy and orderly. I'm sure our son does not do that. Four, fervorous nibbles. Your boss likes you because you get your work done quickly. You have a million things to do and never enough time to do them. Dunked, everyone likes you because you're always upbeat. You like to sugarcoat unpleasant experiences and rationalize bad situations into good ones. I also like dunk, so that fits me as well. <laughs> Twist it apart. Do you say you eat the inside, then I the cookie? I eat the inside, then the cookie. You have a highly curious nature. You take pleasure in breaking things <laughs> to, <laughs> to find out how they work, though not always able to put them back together. <laughs> If you twist it apart and eat the inside and then toss the cookie, you're good at business and you take risks that pay off. You take what you want and throw the rest away. And the final thing is if you eat just the cookie but you don't like the gooey stuff in, inside, according to the study, you enjoy pain. Why? Wow. <laughs> what in the world? That, that well, was, yeah, that is painful because you're throwing away the very best part. I, so. don't, know. I, I don't know I, of anybody who does that. If you want to know more about this, I've got the whole thing. I'll throw it at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. From Cleveland comes a story of Jesus Ortega, who had just pulled off a successful bank robbery. And he was faced with his question of, what do I do with all this cash? Three bags of cash, small bills. Well, how about I go put it in the bank? 
Oh, my gosh. He opened a savings account. He slipped. At the same bank? No, he slipped up, though. He told the teller, well, I'm homeless and I'm unemployed. Where'd you get this money? Uh, we it talked was, about this it was and given the lady to me. was... No, I, I told you about it because I oh. thought it was so funny. The suspicious teller called the police who identified him as the thief. Cops were leading him out and he shouted back to the teller and asked her, so what interest rate will I be getting again? <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I was laughing about oh, so hard because I was like, the gall that would take. So what was my interest rate? You never told me. <laughs> I'll be back to sign uh, later. I'll be up four <laughs> to six years, apparently. <laughs> they just don't understand that. Oh. That happened in Cleveland. All right, coming up. If you're taking a cruise, you need to be listening because we've got some details of things you should be doing before you take that cruise. That is on the way. If you're taking a cruise this summer, well, congratulations. Sounds like fun. I actually wanted to. We're trying to work on a deal. I'll see what happens. But Our kids don't want to. They don't want to go. It's funny. They don't want to go on a cruise. It, and you'll have to reach out and let us know because I thought it would be really fun if we did a cruise and then we invited our listeners to join us on the cruise. I think yeah. that would be a blast. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm nuts. Maybe nobody would want to go on a cruise with us. <laughs> we, we don't necessarily seem like the kind of people you'd want to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are going on a cruise, leave your expensive jewelry at home. Experts say the day you leave the ship is prime time for ripoffs because they'll go to port, you know, and they'll, they'll go from place to place. That's when most thefts occur because your chances of getting caught are the lowest. On week-long cruises, crooks have time to case the joint. Thieves make notes and plan their moves just before the ship docks. They strike and then they vanish because they can take off before you get back. Wow. So they're saying if you're going to take a cruise, don't take expensive jewelry. Leave that stuff at home. Or if you are going to take it, wear it. Don't leave it in your room. So there you go. A little tip from travel expert John and Heidi. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're not quite that. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds earning less than 6%, listen to this, commercial mortgage bridge loans pay 6% to 8%. That might be just what you need. You're placed in first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels, apartments, and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges, and you can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. I'll give you a toll-free number to call, 888-547-8007. Start earning 6% now. Call 888-547-8007. John and Heidi. I hope this isn't right. I got a study here that really, it's kind of a bummer. It's a downer. A new study claims the number of Americans who pray or even say they believe in God has hit an all-time low, Heidi. Isn't that sad to hear? I believe it. With the media completely against Christianity mm. every time you turn around. Doesn't matter. It's no wonder that they're talking more and more people I stand out up. of it. I stand up for my rights all the time. You can try to talk me out of it, but I believe and you cannot change my belief. San Diego State University psychology professor Jean M. Twang led the study published in this the journal Sage Open, which looked at data from 58,893 re- let me try that again. 58,893 respondents to the General Society Survey. Researchers found that five times as many Americans in 2014 reported that they never prayed when compared with the same Americans in the early 1980s. Nearly twice as many over the same period also said they don't believe in God. Wow. I've got a link if you want to read that. That is really sad. I think we should be praying for those people. And here's the thing I just don't understand. I don't understand how you could not believe in God. I mean, you look around at all the beautiful things, you look at all the wonderful things that happen, all of the stuff, and tell me that this was an accident, that this was the, the result of... Of an explosion, yeah, whatever. that was just chance. Yeah. You know, imagine this. Well, first of all, if, if life was created by a Big Bang, you know, millions of years ago... How come life doesn't just randomly pop up all the time? Why aren't you looking out the right, window? Right, I've go, seen wow, explosions and look at that. There's not a there whole was lot a of life left. Car accident <laughs> and a dog jumped out because he was created in the explosion. <laughs> you know that doesn't happen. I've ne- you know it, it doesn't happen. And the same people who define life when they look at a single cell like a little tiny amoeba, if they found that on another planet, they would call it life. But these same people here don't call a baby life until it's born. That doesn't make any sense to me either. You know, if they sound a single-cell organism on another planet, oh, hey, there's life on that planet. But here, 
Until they're born, they're not life. I just don't get it. Anyway, I'll move on. Heidi's telling me to climb off my soapbox. Yeah, it's <laughs> always at about this time, like I don't the end know of the why. show. I for whatever reason, you get... Uh... Hey, guess what? We've got some good news, and it has nothing to do with anything that's religious. <laughs> it's, it's good news, I think, that's on the way. Thanks for listening. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap this program up with some good news. And I do think this is good news. Uh, When I was a kid, I remember going and watching this movie called The Terminator. Do you remember that? Yeah, I didn't go to it like at the theater. It was good. It was a good movie. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did a phenomenal job, and it was such a great movie. That about 10 years later, they said, we should do a a sequel to this. So they did Terminator 2. And that one did really well. And it was about 10 years later, they did another. And I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe just five years later, they did another. Well, now Terminator Genesis opened to a mixed response last summer. While the film was not a hit with critics, Genesis still pulled in more than $440 million worldwide at the box office. But the word has now been relatively quiet As to what their future was going to be, there's now an update, Heidi. Genesis star Amelia Clark, when asked if she might play Sarah Connor in a future Terminator sequel, said, no, I will not. Hmm. And she said, they're not doing anymore. I think that's good news. Sometimes you take things just too far. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm a huge fan of Back to the Future. I mean, I love Back to the Future. Yes, you do. How many times have I watched that movie? Oh, my goodness. I Way too many tell. times. Yeah. I, I, maybe I'll do that this weekend. I'll pop it in and just watch one, two, and three. Love them all. And at one point in my life, I said, it'd be really cool if they would have expanded that. There were a lot of people that wanted to do another one. But now I'm saying, I'm really glad they didn't. Because no matter what they do, it's most likely going to fall short of being as awesome as the first three. So I'm just kind of glad they didn't. You look at Star Wars. Our son is a huge Star Wars fan. But they've gotten to the point where he went to this last one. He's like, I I just didn't like it. He's like, it wasn't as good as all of the other ones. So I'm really glad to hear. That's why I put this in my category with good news that Terminator finally said, we're going to terminate the Terminator. We're done with this because we've run out of good ideas. And it's just getting sad now. Uh, there is a, a, a movie that's going to be coming out soon that I'm kind of interested to see what they're going to do here. But Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure has a, a third installment. You coming. know, I'm kind of excited to see that one. It's the same <laughs> actors and stuff. But the thing I'm wondering is what, is, what is the purpose of this one? Didn't they say everything they needed to in the first one and the second one? I don't is know. Is there more that needs to be Maybe said? Maybe something else happened. I uh, don't know. Well, we'll see. Uh, I am excited about the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off back in theaters coming up in May. Super excited about that. If you get a chance to get out and see that, get out and see that. Again, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 30-year anniversary coming up, and they're going to be back in theaters. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. Time now for the bonus break, only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. And your bonus break is brought to you by the good folks at Knowles Systems. If you haven't heard of them, well, you need to listen up, because i got to tell you all about this. If you have funds earning less than 6%, maybe you should check into a better system, like Knowles Systems. They have commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com. If you've never heard of a commercial mortgage bridge loan, I'm going to tell you what this is. It's a loan paying 6% to 8%, and it could be just what you need. You're placed in the first position on loans secured by high-quality commercial real estate like hotels and apartments and office buildings. Your principal never fluctuates in value. You receive 6% per year paid monthly, and your principal is returned in full at the end of each cycle. You never pay commissions, management fees, or asset charges. You can make these loans inside or outside of an IRA. If you'd like more info on how you can start earning 6% or more right now, call 888 547-8007. I'll give you that number again in a second. But first, you might want to just check out the website if that's easier. CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com. Again, CommercialMortgageBridgeLoans.com or 888-547-8007.
All right, I have just one thing for my bonus break here, and I'm going to read this to you. I thought this was really clever. I don't know if you oh, thought it was clever or not. no. Did you think it was good? I don't even know what you're reading. Usually when you've got something that you think is clever, it's really lame. No, they said, uh, the perfect employee, Bob Smith, my assistant programmer, can always be found, and then line two, hard at work at his desk. He works independently without line oh, three. Oh, okay, I know what that is. Wasting company time, talking to colleagues. Bob never, line four, thinks twice about assisting fellow employees, and always, line five, finishes given assignments on time. Often he takes extended, line six, measures to complete his work, sometimes skipping coffee, uh, line seven, breaks. Bob is dedicated. Bob is a dedicated individual who holds absolutely no, line eight, vanity in spite of his high accomplishments, and profound nine says knowledge in his field. I firmly believe that Bob can be ten classed as an asset employee, the type which cannot be eleven dispensed with. Consequently, I duly recommend that Bob be twelve promoted to executive management, and a proposal will be thirteen executed as soon as possible. The reason <laughs> I had to say the little numbers in there is because then right underneath of it it says addendum. That idiot was standing over my shoulder while I wrote the report that I just sent to you earlier today. Kindly reread only the odd numbered lines. <laughs> so this is what happens when you read the odd number lines. This is actually really cute. Bob and I'll put this on Facebook too. I just thought this was so clever. Bob Smith, my assistant programmer, can always be found wasting company time talking to colleagues. Bob never finishes given assignments on time. He often takes extended breaks. Bob is dedic- a dedicated individual who has absolutely no knowledge in his field. I firmly believe that Bob can be cl- dispensed with consequently i duly recommend that bob be executed as soon as possible <laughs> that's what it is when you read just every other line i thought that executed. was really clever that escalated quickly yeah i wonder who came up with that that is such a clever idea that is very clever so anyway that was sent to me through facebook and i know it's kind of hard when you're uh you know reading it to make it mean the same thing but i thought i would share that because i just thought that was pretty darn clever something else that was sent to me i thought this was very interesting to note uh I've got a friend that's very, very, very conservative, and he keeps getting upset with with what people are doing, uh, and Facebook is kind of his ground right now to have his opinion shared. And he sent this to me, and I actually looked to see if this was true because I didn't realize this. But he said, President Obama calls Donald Trump's plan to construct a wall on the southern U.S. border with Mexico half-baked. But, Mr. Obama, you need to know, the southern border fence was approved by Congress back in 2006. And he goes on to say, we just need a president that can actually get things done. Yeah. So did you know that? that there was I a, did know that. This was approved in two, by Congress in 2006. So when Donald Trump's talking about it, everybody's saying it was his plan. They're going, uh, this Which, guy was... Which, by the way, in 2006, we had a Democratic Congress. So there you go. I just think that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that. Hey, a uh, female clown from New York State has been banned from wearing her costume after being convicted of charity theft, Heidi. Oh. Melinda Shipman was recently sentenced to four months in jail, given five years probation, after she kept $1,600 she collected for a family of a child who died from cancer. Oh, my god! That is so sad. The woman, also known as Minnie the Clown, was also ordered to give the family the money and perform community service. So I'm really sad for that family, and I'm really sad to hear that there was a clown out there that was clowning around like that. That's not good at all. Thank you so much for listening to our weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. The bonus break brought to you by Knowles Systems. If you have funds that are earning less than 6%, that should make you mad. I mean, it would make me mad. you got funds that are making almost nothing. You need a better system. Knowles Systems has a better system. Check out their website, commercialmortgagebridgeloans.com, to learn about commercial mortgage bridge loans. You can earn 6%, up to 8%. It could be just what you need. Commercial Mortgage Bridge Loans.com.